lovely introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate the warm welcome. I got to tell you, it's an honor to be here today speaking to the members of the National Automobile Dealers Association. You know, this organization represents the lifeblood of our industry, the people who are truly on the front lines serving our customers every day, our dealers. Now, I want to start by acknowledging the 823 Hyundai dealers in the U.S. I know many of you are here today. And if, if you guys don't mind, don't be shy. Could you stand up for just a moment? And I know there's some Hyundai dealers here from, uh, from other places around the world. Let's give these guys a hand. We had a record-breaking year in 2012, and of course, we could not have done it without you. Thanks for your partnership, your dedication to Hyundai, and your absolute focus on delighting every customer you encounter. I want to give one more acknowledgement, too. Um, you guys probably heard this, but uh, Peter Brown, the publisher of Automotive News and a member of the Crane family of automotive media since 1984, is going to retire later this year. Wherever you are, Peter, you're probably out on the golf course. Uh, congratulations on a distinguished career in journalism and for playing such a vital role in our industry. Best of luck to you as you begin your new chapter. Peter Brown. Now, let's step back and look at the business of retailing automobiles in the U.S. It's a huge part of the American economy. Together, automotive retailers employ nearly one million people and deliver $670 billion in sales. That's 13.7% of total retail sales in the United States. This is amazing. You guys provide jobs, a stable tax base, and as you saw earlier, contribute to philanthropic causes in your local communities across the country. Despite all that, it seems like every day someone is bashing the U.S. automotive retail system as being out of touch or inefficient. Now, as we all know, there have been quite a few attempts to change it. Anyone remember the Ford Retail Network? I hear a lot. Or more recently, there's Tesla's effort to set up factory stores. It's always something. And I'll tell you, are these worthy initiatives? What do you guys think? I mean, they are, in a way. The competition of big ideas is truly what makes the world go round. It's what keeps pushing us forward as a society. And those are all smart ideas developed by smart people. But I'll tell you something. I think they're missing something simple an essential fact. The current system works. It works. And it works really well. From our perspective at Hyundai, the franchise dealer system in the U.S. works because it's the concentrated distillation of another system that we know works very well. One that's been proven over the last couple of centuries, the American free enterprise system. Now, many of you here today are dealer principals. You guys are CEO owners of your own business. In most cases, you have significant percentages of your net worth invested in your business. You are, as we like to say, all in. And that, my friends, is the most clarifying motivator of all, isn't it? You have to earn a profit or your business will fail. You have to delight your customers, or someone else is gonna. You know, there's a commonly held belief that consumers don't like the car buying experience. Yet an automotive retail today study conducted by the research firm Worthland Worldwide just a few years ago found that 91% of new car buyers were satisfied with their experience. And just a few months ago, the folks at J.D. Power with their 2012 sales satisfaction index found that 75% of new vehicle buyers rated their purchase experience somewhere between outstanding and truly exceptional. It's pretty good, isn't it? What this tells me is that we have a good system, and it's built primarily on the backs of thousands of independent franchise owners with all the right motivations. Now, can we do better? 
Well, yeah, of course. And I might even have a few ideas here to share with you today. But I've got to tell you, at Hyundai, we are big fans of this system and huge supporters of our retail network. It's strong. It's efficient. We've seen recently it's incredibly responsive. And it works. Now, I don't think any of you will be surprised at this fact. But it might surprise some others not as close to this business as you guys are. When we look at the performance of our independent dealers and compare it to the larger public groups, we find our independents not only make more money, but they also do a better job at delighting our customers. Now, how about that? Within our Hyundai retail network, we've enjoyed record levels of dealer profits these last several years and record levels of customer satisfaction in 2012. Together, we've built a network that is delighting record numbers of owners and shoppers, and we've done it without relying on any volume-based bonuses or brand-damaging rebates. It can be done, and we are doing it. As entrepreneurs, you've made it your business to defy expectations, and I'm proud to say that's something Hyundai has in common with all of you. So, We've got a system that works. Now let's look at some of the opportunities we've got in front of us. And going way back to 1994, I used to really like this guy, writer and humorist Dave Barry. Remember Dave Barry? Um, he said, the internet is a giant international network of intelligent, informed computer enthusiasts, by which I mean people with no lives. It's still a funny line, sort of, but these days it's become a little bit ironic, hasn't it? Our research shows that the car shopping process now relies heavily on online activity. About 84% of buyers rely in some fashion on the internet during the purchase process. And a new study by AOL tells us that the duration of that shopping process, perhaps because of all those internet shopping tools that are now available, is much, much shorter than our old traditional thinking would have it. It's now, on average, just 28 days from the consumer's first search to driving off of your lot in a new car. So clearly, the internet has changed the shopping experience, but without a doubt, the dealership remains the linchpin of the sales process. The key here, more than ever now, given that short duration of the shopping process, is unifying the online environment with a physical dealership environment to deliver a seamless progression that's consistent aligned with the brand, and offering a delightful consumer experience at every point of interaction. I'll take, for instance, what we're doing with our online presence at Hyundai. We've standardized our dealer sites with a template, which provides ample flexibility for your personalization, yet ensures we have a consistent visual branding and tonality. I like to think it's a lot like our sensible take on dealer facility standards. For the customer, it provides a cohesive experience throughout the online shopping world as they move across Hyundai.com, our online ads, our Tier 2 ad association sites, and our dealer's own websites. And I'll tell you, that cohesive branded experience has really paid dividends. And we had a great example of that this past week after the Super Bowl. Now, we wanted to ensure our Super Bowl investment did more than create just feel-good ads. We were firmly focused on driving shopping activity, not just to Hyundai.com, but across third-party sites, mobile, and dealer sites. And the results were terrific. Folks like Autotrader.com saw shopping increases for us of over 1,000%. Our mobile visits were up 547%. Tier 3 visits were up 261%, with inventory searches up a whopping 293%. Those were great lifts, better than our best ever 2012 Super Bowl results, and they show the power of a more integrated internet shopping experience that we've created with our dealer partners. Now that transformation we've made there on the internet is a great example of the relationship we've built together. At Hyundai, we've worked hard to foster an open and transparent relationship with our dealers. Now, we hold monthly conference calls with our dealer council. And three times a year, we meet in person for several days of discussion on all aspects of our business. 
And several times a year, we conduct a live video conference call, something we call Talk from the Top, with all of our dealers, where we devote half the session to answering any and all questions they may have. We typically get over 200 questions in each session and answer as many as we can live without a safety net. And everything we don't get to in those video sessions, we post on our dealer website later. I'll tell you, it's great open dialogue, and unlike this speech, it's completely unscripted. That's the way we like it at Hyundai. Now, I'll be honest, we don't always agree, but I think it's fair to say we always get to a mutual understanding of our positions. And you know what? It's made us stronger. In the end, we know it takes great dealers to delight customers. And a large part of our job is to help our dealers become great. Now that starts with great product. So let me share some of our product philosophy with you. Now at Hyundai, it's probably fair to say that we've evolved from being a fast follower to becoming more comfortable now taking positions of leadership in the industry. We have this little saying inside the company, when the whole industry moves to the left, we'll look in that direction, but we'll look even more intently to the right to see if there are any opportunities out there. From our point of view, that's innovation, that's leadership. And we've distilled that philosophy into a simple three-word mantra. We say, defy, design, delight. Now, in any industry that's rapidly transforming itself, being able to change is crucial. In his book, Tribes, Seth Godin concludes, change almost never fails because it's too early. It almost always fails because it's too late, right? Let me give you a few examples of how we've defied traditional thinking and embraced change. Let's start with a Hyundai Sonata. When we launched this car a few years ago, conventional industry logic held that mid-sized cars had standard four-cylinder engines and optional V6 engines. But there was a downside to that approach, right? It meant the vehicle platform had to carry an extra 40 or 50 pounds and had to package extra room around the engine, which made the hood bigger than it needed to be, all to accommodate a V6 engine that might garner just 10 or 15% share. So we defied that logic, replaced the V6 with a fuel-efficient two-liter turbo, and we made Sonata the first high-volume mid-sized car with only four-cylinder powertrains. Now, since then, Sonata has set three consecutive annual sales records. 2012, this past year, was its best year ever. And we've established a bit of a template, I'd say, for other mid-sized sedans to follow. Now, when it comes to design, we recognize this as our single most important opportunity to delight our owners. This guy, Eddie Opara, a partner at Pentagram, says it really well. Design is not about solving problems. It's about making people happy. Think about that for a minute. Design is about making people happy. As an industry, we might have been a bit slow in coming to that conclusion. It seems obvious now. But I think it's fair to say we've all got the message. And maybe, maybe cars like Sonata and Elantra have helped that transformation come a bit more quickly. Now, traditionally, compact and mid-sized cars have been boring because market research has concluded that vanilla design was acceptable to a large population of buyers. Quality, safety, and fuel economy were paramount. That's what consumers told us when we asked. And consumers rarely actively asked for a hot-looking sedan. So, Design was secondary for many companies, for many years, even at Hyundai. Well, we stopped buying into that logic many years ago. And honestly, that's been the primary driver behind the recent sales success we've seen at Hyundai. Both Sonata and Elantra have doubled their retail sales performance over the prior generation, and our research shows that, by far, design has been the key driver to that success. And that was precisely the thinking behind another recent good news story for us, the Veloster. Now, honestly, just look at that car. Love it or not, could you imagine any other company other than Hyundai bringing that thing to market? That car definitely defies convention. It's a car with one door on the driver's side and two conventional doors, not suicide doors, on the passenger side. 
It's a sporty looking car. It's just 166 inches long with an incredible amount of passenger and cargo volume. It's fuel efficient, and there's a 1.6 liter turbo version if you're feeling even sportier. And I tell you, while a few automotive journalists struggle to come to terms with this car, and honestly still do, consumers love it. And it ended up being one of the fastest turning cars in the entire industry last year. Design is about making people happy. And Veloster owners are the happiest bunch of owners in the entire Hyundai family. And let me tell you, it took a lot of courage to launch a car like this one, but it really paid off with Veloster. It defied convention with its design, and it ended up delighting customers with its unique approach. So defy, design, delight. That's our business model in a nutshell at Hyundai. Now, taking on conventional thinking as we did with Veloster is something that's become ingrained in our corporate culture at Hyundai. While we're a big company, we're actually top five in global sales this past year, we've got a culture of setting bold targets that require innovative thinking to deliver. And that's pretty much how we ended up with our premium product retail strategy. Now, rather than follow the tried and true and create a completely separate sales channel to distribute our premium products, we chose to keep Genesis and Equus in our Hyundai showrooms. We felt this was an opportunity to use our premium models to raise the entire consumer experience for all of our Hyundai models. We believe those benefits outweighed the downside. But as in all things, sometimes a good strategy can be helped along by a bit of good fortune. Timing, as they say, can be everything. Now, our launch of Genesis came just months before the Great Recession in 2008. Creating a standalone retail channel would have been a difficult financial burden for our dealers to support at such a tenuous economic time. And our launch very well may have failed if we had taken that conventional approach. But by defying conventional wisdom and placing Genesis with our existing dealers, we saved our dealer network hundreds of millions of dollars of capital expense. And one of the key missions in placing premium models in our showrooms was to deliver a halo benefit for our overall brand while creating tangible benefits for all Hyundai shoppers. And Genesis helped us achieve that goal. And it demonstrated the Hyundai brand had greater reach than many had expected. It's proven there's a large group of consumers out there who are comfortable spending over $40,000 for a great car with great quality and great residual value but wearing a Hyundai badge. And the success of Genesis gave us permission to take another step into premium vehicle retailing with the launch of Equus in 2010. And we had two key goals in mind for Equus. First, we wanted to show the world that we could design and engineer a great flagship product, something that would rival Lexus LS, BMW 7 Series, Mercedes-Benz S-Class. And at the same time, we wanted to build further confidence in the Hyundai brand across a broad audience of car buyers while lifting the consumer experience in our showrooms. Now again, conventional industry wisdom says premium vehicles need to be sold in large, dedicated, luxurious showrooms. These showrooms, and you've heard this term, they're often called mausoleums, often feature artwork, marble, cascading waterfalls, cappuccino machines, even putting greens. While often stunning bits of architecture and interior design, we know the reality is most affluent consumers aren't shopping at the bit to visit any dealership, no matter how glitzy it may be. That led us to take a closer look at our target Equus buyer, a group we call Pragmatic Affluence. And they're one of the largest group of premium car buyers out there. We discovered that they're the kind of person who might rather shop at Costco than a premium retail store, but who might still enjoy overseas vacations with their family every year. These people want a quality product, but they're hesitant to pay a premium for the superficial patina of a luxury showroom. Well, today's savvy car buyers understand they're paying for that luxury overhead. And what they value much more than a lavish showroom backdrop is their time. So to differentiate Equus and Genesis in the retail environment, 
We introduced a simple showroom within a showroom approach, and we invested our resources not in facilities, but in innovations that would save our premium buyers that most precious commodity, time. And for Equus, that starts with our sales valet concept, something we call your time, your place. It's a unique way of allowing consumers who are interested in Equus to make a reservation for a product demo and test drive. They can come into the dealership for the demo and test drive, or if they prefer, they can have a demonstration vehicle brought right to their home or their business. And this personal touch respects, again, that most valuable asset, our customer's time. And that idea is really the guiding philosophy for our premium retailing approach. We want to put our money and your money where it matters most, into our cars and the services that delight our customers, not in mandates for mausoleums. And we really deliver on this idea with our service valet concept, which we call Equus at your service. And the concept here is really simple. Many premium brands offer free maintenance. It's a great idea. Consumers love it. But the popularity of these free maintenance programs often means very busy service drives. And premium car owners often feel frustrated at the wait times they encounter there. Now, with Equus at your service, owners simply phone their dealership or use an online scheduling system to have their car conveniently picked up for that free maintenance or warranty work at their home or their office. We also leave behind a service loan car, a Genesis or an Equus, for the owner to drive while their car is in service. And of course, we compensate the dealer for all of this. Now, so far, about 50% of Equus owners have taken advantage of this, and their satisfaction with this service is through the roof. They love it. As I like to say with Equus, it's not about putting the owner at the front of the line, it's about eliminating the line entirely. And for smart, affluent buyers, time and convenience, well, that's the ultimate luxury, right? Your time, your place, and Equus at your service programs deliver premium care that makes a difference. Premium care that truly delights these guys. Now, to ensure that our dealers were prepared to deliver a premium ownership experience, we introduced specialized training and certification for our sales and service personnel. So far, 22,000 Hyundai employees and dealership staff took part in that training last year. And the initial phases of the training were so well received, participants actually urged us to offer it across all of our dealerships. It's called the Hyundai Priority Experience, and it's now the bedrock of all of our retail training programs. Now, the real question is, has this unique approach with premium products really made a difference? Is it working? Well, from a sales and share perspective, I can tell you it is. We've done all right. We've grown premium segment market share every year since we launched Genesis in 2008. And in 2012, we held a 9% market share in those premium segments in which we compete. That's not bad. Especially when you consider the Hyundai brand as a whole earns about a 5% retail share of total industry. So we're actually overrepresented in those premium segments compared to our brand within the industry as a whole. And the products have been pretty well received. Genesis won the North American Car of the Year in its launch year. And both Genesis and Equus have won several industry awards, including the JD Power Appeal Award and the Vehicle Dependability Study Awards. And this is really cool, I'm proud of this. Um, they both sit atop their very fine German competition in ALG residual value studies. And maybe most importantly, the customer service philosophy we've instilled with our dealers is having a significant impact across our entire model lineup. That's just what we wanted. JD Power sales satisfaction scores for the Hyundai brand improved by 21 points last year, the second biggest improvement in the industry. That perhaps is the most satisfying aspect of this strategy and one that we're gonna continue to work on with our dealer network in the years ahead. Now that strategy also includes a bolder product design concept and it's similar to what you've seen from us with our high volume Hyundai products, but these new Genesis and Equus products are gonna have their own unique premium design identity. And we shared a glimpse of this at the North American International Auto Show in Detroit last month with our HCD14 Genesis concept. How does that car look to you guys? It's not bad. 
Thank you. Now, that's not necessarily the 2015 Genesis, but it gives you an idea of where we're going to take design direction for that car and future cars in our premium lineup. Now, before I give away too much about our future product strategy, let me close out with a final thought. You know, inspiration can come from many places. And I'm not ashamed to admit that I got some of the inspiration for these remarks from, of all things, a fortune cookie. Maybe, uh, maybe you've gotten this fortune cookie or have seen this little phrase before. When the winds of change blow, some people build walls and others build windmills. The idea of embracing change isn't a new one. We've always faced daunting challenges in this industry. And think of how full our plates are right now. We've got uncertainty in the economy. We've got uncertainty in our tax code. We have these tremendous imperatives, right? Improving fuel efficiency, mobile connectivity, distracted driving, vehicle safety, the challenges of growing global mobility. Well, it's in that uncertainty, in all of that challenge, within those winds of change, that lie all of these extraordinary opportunities for all of us. I think two great leaders can inspire us here. Hyundai founder, a guy named J.Y. Chung, when confronted by an employee facing a seemingly insurmountable task, was fond of asking simply, have you tried? Have you tried? Now, he might have been inspired by another automotive industry icon, Henry Ford, who said famously, if you believe you can or you can't, you're right. Now, I know many of you have embraced the can-do philosophy of these two great automotive leaders. And as torchbearers for the American system of free enterprise, your optimism, your get-it-done philosophy, your commitment to growing your business and delighting your customers is a beacon for all of us. And at Hyundai, we know our success is a direct function of your efforts and your achievements. Your skill, your commitment, your entrepreneurial spirit give me confidence that going forward as an industry, we'll continue to defy conventional thinking and delight consumers in ways that we can't even imagine today. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Have a good rest of the convention.